Abbiamo un servizio di comunicazione che si trova in pacchetti di relazioni pubbliche. Jensen Park e Package Bonapa. Nous sommes un service de digital communication. SFR, paquet de marques de diable. C'est un service qui n'est pas très bien. We are Publicize, a digital communication service which creates PR packages geared for growth. A very quick guide to pitching to journalists. My name is Eddie Arrieta, and today we're going to be talking about a few things. So, a guide to pitching journalists, some examples, real life examples uh, of different pitches, a pro tip for all of you. And then we will have an interview with Jordan Jones from Latin American Reports, the sociable 152nd Social Geek, and Jim Glade from Publicize. But what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about how to pitch journalists, how to pitch publications different types of, of pitches and real examples of how those pitches look like. Um, also, what, what not to do when you're doing that. Um, hopefully, uh, at the end, when we're having a conversation with Jordan Jones and Jim Glade from the PR and journalistic perspective, uh, what are some of the real life examples that they can give us uh, from there? Um, my name is Eddie Arrieta. I'm the president and co-founder uh, of Publicize and Espacio. If you want to reach out, that's my email, that's my LinkedIn, that's my Twitter. I'll get back to you as soon as you message me. It's gonna be really fast, I promise you. Um, let's get started. This is a very quick guide to pitching journalists. So let's start very quickly thinking about what PR has traditionally been. And when many people think of PR, they immediately think of uh, press releases. Well, you know, most PR agencies work on the behalf of clients. Uh, press releases uh, only serve one purpose, and that's to inform the press about a company announcement. Uh, but, but you know, the average startup, and probably most are listening to this right now, uh, and, and a lot of the companies that we work with don't necessarily have announcements coming up every month or every six weeks or every eight weeks. In fact, many of the early stage startups uh, have announcements every once a quarter, maybe once every semester. And what it is uh, that you would have to do then in that situation to get coverage and publications, that is what we're trying to answer here. The, and that answer is very simple. Pitch other types of stories. And that's exactly what we're gonna be going over today is an alternative view of PR from pitching uh, different stories, different types of stories, and what those will look like in real life. Uh, but to get started, um, let, let's let's look really at uh, what you are aiming to win uh, with earned media. Uh, you know, you need to examine the strategic relationship that will help you connect your PR goals with your business objectives. From our perspective, throughout the years. Uh, working with many clients around the world, we found that uh, business goals can be met with strong and strategic PR. Uh, and you know, there is a lot of detail in, in the image that I'm showing you right now, but consider your narrative, consider, consider your announcements, your upcoming plans, uh, and then consider what's happening in the, in, in the industry. That is the sweet spot where, do, where you want to be at. So think about this and uh, you know, if, if you want more information, uh, we, we will be talking about some of those resources in a little bit. Uh, but let's get on to the, the, the specifics of, of how this looks. And we're going to go, be going over six real world uh, journalist email pitch examples. And, and they come in different ways. Um, so um, I will go in detail later um, uh, on, on all of this because there is a lot more that you should be able or will be able to see if you download our Pitch into Journalist Toolkit, which is available right now uh, in the chat section. If you want to read it later, uh, it will be sent with the slide deck of this webinar and the full recording of, of this as well. Um, you know, uh, 
so, so let's get started with, with uh, a, a few of these. The first one that we should think about is guest article pitch. Uh, and let's look at uh, what are the elements of, of, of a guest article pitch. Um, a guest article pitch is an article that's published by a publication under your name, as simple as that. So you do this when um, you are trying to pitch a guest article to a publication, uh, uh, talking about some general topic that's relevant to, you, to your industry, uh, and that you can talk about that. So the key takeaway of this type of pitching is that you need to show social proof that implied relevancy. Let me repeat that. So show social proof that imply relevancy. Let's look at this in an example. So we're trying to show social proof that implies relevancy right here. What you can see is someone with 20 years of experience then can talk about a topic. So if we come back, we show social proof that imply relevancy. Um, you can see, as I mentioned earlier, on our pitch toolkit, uh, you should be able to see this example in much more depth. Uh, the, the second type of pitch is actionable insight pitch. And if we are to think about this in particular, uh, the, the sections it has, it's dependent, of course, of what it is. And, and an actionable insight, it's a comment of a story that's attributed to you. You are commenting on a story, and that's attributed to you. This is used uh, to give actionable, practical insight, to give expertise based on your experience, based on your industry, what you know about that industry. The key takeaway here is that the importance and the impact of the information the expert has and how he has his background proves it is the key element. So you need to show the impact of the information that you have and how your background proves that. So in this example, uh, as, you can, as you can probably see, this is talking about the insights uh, that this person is able to give, you know, give reliable serialization software, importance of data, data quality, and many more. You need to show, once again, the impact of the information you have and how you, your background proves that. This information, it's important, and I know it's important, and my background proves that I can talk about this. Let's talk about one of my favorite. Uh, this is uh, breaking news. And, and breaking news is, is very interesting. Uh, because it's a commentary on, on breaking news. So it's used to jump on a particular piece of news, that's breaking news, uh, and that's relevant to you and your business. So you have to almost find that sweet spot of something that's breaking news, but that also fit your business. And you need to also have an expert opinion. You need to have an expert opinion to be able to produce something of quality. So the key takeaway here is that um, you know, you need to present a unique insight that transforms the understanding of a piece of breaking news. It transforms the understanding of a piece of breaking news. And you can see here how there is a piece of information that's breaking news. It's Mars and IBM announcing their intention to form a blockchain venture. And then, you know, from our expertise, we are able to provide insight that transforms this specific news. And he's saying, these are, the, these are the things that they need to be thinking about to do that. Um, so this is what providing a commentary on breaking news looks like. Um, now we have a sector overview pitch. Uh, and, and think about what it is, is a general view of the sector, but is really an assessment of a specific industry if you want to be thinking about your that, that specific industry for you. It is used. Um, when pitching to provide an overview or analysis of something that's happening at a high level in your industry. Uh, the key takeaway, and I think this is very important, is you need to present data and arguments to validate the understanding of an industry sector. And let's see the example here. There, there is the understanding of the industry and sector, and there is some data to validate that. You have that data and you are able to provide it Thus, you are able to then validate the understanding of an industry and you are providing a sector overview when you do that. Let's get on to how X will help Y. And this is a mathematical formula, I guess, how X will help Y. It is a proposed solution and it's used when pitching a story, advice or insight that provides a solution to a known problem. If you are able to provide a solution to a known problem, then you will be using this type of pitching. 
The key takeaway is how a particular trait characteristic condition about you or your company helps solve a known problem. How a particular trait characteristic condition about you or your company helps solve a known problem. So there is something happening in the world and then because of your, once again, because of a characteristic that you have or a condition that you have, you are able to provide a solution. Um, and we are able to find that for mobility, we're able to find that for um, environmental resources, for financial situations, for many things. We are able to find how our industry, or how our company rather, uh, provides a solution to a given problem. And this is an example, once again, if you're interested to see in much more detail what these examples look like, what a press release that has this sort of page look like, Feel free to send us a message if you didn't see um, the downloadable link above or if you did not register before or for some reason are not going to get the toolkit, just let us know, uh, but we'll be sending this toolkit, um, the, the pitching toolkit to everybody who is listening right now and you'll see this in much more detail. Now, um, product review, very simple, very straightforward, and it is when your product is professionally reviewed by a publication. Um, well, this one is, is nice and simple. Uh, you are pitching your product to professional reviewers. You want people to look at your product uh, or your service, rather your product, and you want them to review it. So you need to show relevance to whoever it is that you're sending this. Um, so don't send your um, a mobile phone hardware to a, a furniture reviewer. Uh, that wouldn't make sense. So relevance and product description. Uh, in this example, you see relevance, you know, this is, this is a similar story, so you're showing relevance, and then you show a description of what this uh, product or, uh, um, or service is doing. It's conversational AI, a powered interface. Um, so very simple, relevance and product description. Now, pro tip for everyone, pay close attention to what's happening in this one. We're gonna be talking about when is the best time to pitch journalists. When is the best time to be pitching journalists? And this is what uh, the, the data is, is saying. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, most journalists prefer to be uh, pitched during the morning, 60% um, so of them. Uh, so let's say you're already pitching them on a Tuesday at, uh, in the morning, your chances are highly improved. Uh, journalists are also looking to be contacted over email, of course, there's a small percentage that wouldn't prefer email, but in the by, by the most part, most would. And, uh, um, you know, best times, 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, be, of course, aware of national holidays and major events. If something's happening, probably they'll, you'll go to the bottom of their inbox. I hope this is helpful so far. If, once again, you want to write a killer pitch and approach journalists the right way, get our toolkit. There are six real world uh, journalist email pitch examples in there. We just went over some of them in, in very little detail. There's much more to it uh, on our toolkit and you should be able to see, you know, five, six different specific parts that you can standardize to make sure that your pitching is not only more effective, but also more efficient. Is that correct? That is correct. Let's talk then to, to the experts and let's get, um, you know, this going. Everyone who is listening, you can ask any questions that you want. Uh, I'm gonna be introducing uh, our speakers. Any questions that you might have regarding how to pitch, uh, how your company specifically uh, could pitch. If you have an industry that you think it's tricky and you want some insight into how to do that, we will be able to answer those questions today. I'm here, I do this every day. Jim Glade is here, he does this every day. And we have also Jordan Jones who knows a lot about things that are pitched to him often and how he you know, navigates uh, the difficulties of, of you know, deciding what to cover and what not to cover. Um, so we are um, introducing, of course, uh, Jim Glade, and I think we had a um, small slide about him, but this, this slide will be shared with his contact information over email so that you can contact uh, Jim personally and also um, uh, Jordan Jim Glade is a senior PR consultant at Publicize and has contributed to The Atlantic, Rolling Stone, TechCrunch, and others. Jim, bienvenido. Thank you very much, Eddie. No problem. Thanks for everybody. And we have also Jordan 
T. Jones, former associate editor at The Atlantic and current managing editor at the Sociable Social Geek 150 Sec and uh, Latin America Reports. Also, Jordan, bienvenido. Hey, thank you, Eddie. Good to be here. Thank you, guys. Um, so uh, as, as I was mentioning, Travel Warren, who was listening, we're going to be opening up the floor for questions. Uh, there will be lots of questions, I, I presume, on specifics about if a story sounds attractive or not to you. And I'm hoping to, to get those questions started as soon as possible. But we had a couple of questions prepared. Uh, we send those to them uh, before the webinar. So I want to get started with Jim. I hope that's OK. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jim, uh, one of the questions I had for you is, uh, what's your favorite type of pitch? And, and how, what, what sort of response have you seen from journalists on, on that uh, type of pitch that, that's your favorite? Yeah, um, well, good question. Um, I, I think, uh, personally, my favorite type of pitch just working um, as a PR would be um, something that's to do with breaking news. Um, just for me personally, it's a bit more exciting. Um, and I feel like, um, you know, we can we can help insert our clients into uh, a news arc that's happening right now, um, which is always a value and it can lead to kind of multiple results as well. Um, and I have an example that I thought of um, ahead of time um, from a past client or actually a current client, um, but a past campaign. Um, we work with a uh, cyber insurance startup um, and it was also it was actually founded by um, a VP at one of the like one of the largest cybersecurity companies uh, in the world, um, Symantec. And um, uh, essentially, um, the the campaign had to do when um, the, I don't know if you guys remember last year, the WannaCry um, uh, cybersecurity attack. Um, we, we used it as an opportunity to um, kind of uh, insert our, our client um, as an expert in um, cyber insurance um, during that particular time when there was, um, you know, a huge um, uh, news cycle that had to do with one of the biggest cybersecurity attacks kind of in, in U.S. history um, and around the world. Um, and so we were able to, um, uh, by using a pitch um, that offered our, um, the former Symantec VP and, and um, the cyber insurance startup expert, um, we were able to place that in Reuters, um, in dark reading, um, in some of these other bigger publications that really fit, um, not to mention insurance industry publications too that were very much in line with um, their target audience. Um, so I would say that those for me personally are a lot of fun um, just because it's kind of a lot of running around and getting things done fast and coordination, which is for me a lot of fun. Um, but also I, I think something that else is um, that's positive and, and it's to think about is when um, a client that you're working with or, or your own um, particular company that you're pitching to the media on behalf of, um, when you guys are working on a um, on, on a kind of a breaking trend or, or something that's very new in the industry. Um, and for example, um, we had a client um, that was an online interior de uh, design company and they had developed what would be the first um, kind of virtual reality um, interior design um, service and assistant. Um, and so we were able to reach out um, kind of highlighting this new trend in the interior design space. So we specifically reached out to um, uh, publications that cover design or writers that have covered interior design architecture before. Um, and we were able to place that in, in publications like the New York Times, uh, the Wall Street Journal, Digital trends um, and and some others that were a little bit more focused. Uh, Dizen, for example, um, more focused on design. Um, and um, so, so kind of getting ahead of a of a trend and and really uh, being able to um, promote your um, company's product as kind of a leading edge on that trend is is something that um, I also you know really love to do, to do and we had a lot of success with. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, Jim. That answers my question. That was really nice. Jordan, how are you doing, man? Can you I have hear a, me? I, have a, I, have, I can hear you well. I have a tough question for you. OK, I'm ready it's, for it. How, how do you determine if a story is worth covering or not? What, what, what's your, how do you do this formula? Sure. I mean, the formula, um, I think, comes from some, some work on the front end, right? I think it 
comes from an understanding of what the global conversation is. Uh, and that doesn't have to be like global, like world news, but just global in terms of the industry itself. Um, and then knowing very clearly what your um, contribution to that conversation is through your product, through your startup, through your mission. Uh, and then lastly, understanding like, what the publication, uh, what the, the conversation that the publication is trying to push forward. Um, so as a journalist, when I receive a pitch, I'm interested in how this fits into a larger narrative, how this um, it answers a larger question that people are asking. Um, because it's never my uh, an initial intention to promote um, a product um, just for the sake of promoting it in a vacuum. I'm interested in how this fits into a larger narrative. Um, so I think that's the biggest, um, kind of the, the biggest uh, tell for me if something's worth covering. Uh, I've actually done a little bit of research myself and I've come up with a graph um, oh, it's, no. it's, wow. it's, it's very, it's it. very crudely drawn, but it's a, it's a, a, a triple Venn diagram really. And so this is the global conversation. If this is a circle right. and then you have the product and startup conversation, like your messaging and then the publication and what it's trying to push. And so the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle. Um, and that's something I'm really attracted to, to see like, how is this, um, pitch kind of going to help me do my job better. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that, man. Mm -hmm. A, I have a, a few more questions. Maybe, maybe I can have a, a follow-up question for Jim. Um, you, you, you were talking about how you really enjoy, you know, presenting the brand and, and the client, uh, and also what they do and like their narrative. Uh, how do you uh, assess? And, and this is one of the questions, of course, that I that I sent earlier. How do you assess uh, that profile, that that like you know the thought leadership, or how do you assess what it is that the company has? that can be then promoted, that can be then pitched? How do you, like, how do you find there, like what, what's worth pitching, I guess, is my question. Um, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. So um, I think it comes with kind of a lot of honest conversation. Um, I, you know, when, when first on, onboarding a client, I like to have, um, you know, multiple kind of hour long calls um, to really get an idea of, you know, A, the media goals, um, the target audience, and um, their expertise that would, that would help kind of create content that would be valuable to those audiences. Um, um, so, but also kind of to establish kind of a little bit of background on the history of, of the um, kind of the representative or the spokesperson that we'll be using, often the CEO. Um, and then also, um, really establish um, a better understanding of the competition and the, um, you know, where um, where our client is kind of um, fits in the competition and what they're doing differently. Um, so those are some of the things I like to ask. So um, I guess in terms of um, establishing thought leadership and, and who that spokesman is going to be, um, I'd like to like really interview them and, and also take a look at their um, past social proof. So um, that experience could be um, within, uh, you know, prior companies that they work for. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, I think the, um, uh, with, the, with the cyber insurance um, example, the, uh, it, it held a lot of weight that he was a past VP at, a, at like the largest cybersecurity um, firm in the world. Um, so I think that um, that obviously holds a lot of weight. So if you can kind of dig up that, if somebody was a past Google uh, engineer or VP, um, or also um, a lot of the times if somebody's kind of just starting out, if there's any kind of um, um, social proof that surrounds their um, education um, as well, they st st uh, excuse me, study at MIT, Stanford, and, and some of these others, um, that also helps kind of build the social proof because um, a lot of times, essentially, we're reaching out to a journalist that's going to have, uh, in, in, in the case of a startup, is going to have no idea um, who this person is. And so why would I trust kind of their information? And so you want to be sure that whenever you're pitching in your email to include all these kind of social um, proof points as well um, um, to make sure that you can kind of uh, convey this person's um, competency in, in answering these questions. Um, also, I, I, I like to, um, again, you know, really interview the, um, uh, the client as if I was a journalist and really press them on their expertise. Um, a lot of the times, since I'm a PR professional, uh, but I'm not an industry expert, like for say on blockchain or, or 
um, logistics um, technology or IoT. So um, I, I like to pressure them um, in order to give me information that might not be readily available um, online or, or might not be like spoken about as much within the industry that could be actually really valuable. And, and so kind of a, um, a rule of thumb for that is, you know, if I've heard this argument before, um, then it's probably not it's probably not something that's new um, because obviously I'm not an expert in the space. Um, so I, I definitely like to um, um, you know go into those types of areas when when establishing, hey, what is it that my client is an expert in and can be um, a source of value um, to a reporter and then eventually to you know the audience as well. I hope that answered your question a bit. Yes, it did. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I have another question for uh, Jordan, but right before that, someone was asking if uh, we we're going to be sending this out. We're going to be sending the entire uh, full recording of this webinar with the PR toolkit, with some sample press releases, with some details like the ones that Jim is mentioning. Uh, we're going to be sending all of that out to everyone. You can also check the conversations we've had. Rosa has published um, the link to the uh, Pitching to the Journalist Toolkit, and you can check it out there. Uh, Giordano, uh, we're going to get in a little bit into some of the questions from um, the the audience, uh, but I have one question for you, and, and this is about, I'm, I'm, you know, I tried to word this as, as best as I could uh, when I sent you the message, but but really what I was looking in, into was understanding if, if the temptation for writers to cover really big trends is that powerful uh and and of course it is we understand that but for smaller trends and and things that are also shifting industries but in a smaller ways but yet very impactful and like long term uh, how do you assess those and which ones do you do you like do you cover both which ones do you cover less or is there a difference for you uh, i think it's a really good question um and it's something that we think about even outside of um just like pitching we think about it as as far as like what is going on in the in in the world today, and like you know, do we dedicate all of our resources to the biggest to the breaking news story? Um, and the answer is uh, not always, and and usually um, we are looking at some things more subtle uh, in between um, kind of the incremental changes that are going on in in, in industry and some of the bigger. Um, events that are going on uh, that lead to a bigger story. So I think that um, you would be misguided to think that uh, we only cover the biggest trends because what happens between now and then? Um, I'm more interested in a journalist for the the arguments and the lead up to that big story. Uh, and so I think that if you can position a pitch that is again getting to like the questions that people are asking, I think that is much more impactful because um, it can base much more nuance than saying like everyone's talking about this one thing right now so you need to write on it because you know it will lead the front page um, and that very seldom happens uh, in that case we're, we're usually the ones that will be contact, uh, contacting you now we're the ones that have already been watching the story uh, and are looking for um, you know experts in the field but I think if you provide value um, and expertise before then and package your content in a way that is um, indicative of this conversation, that this ongoing conversation, um, then I think when uh, a big trend does arise, then you've already positioned yourself to be an expert in the in the field. Excellent, thank you so much, Jordan. I, I have then now questions from uh, everyone who is listening. Uh, once again, if, if you want to participate, you just have to put your question uh, on the chat section, and there is also a, a question section. Uh, so feel free to use either of those. Um, and we're gonna start reading out um, some of those questions and presenting them to uh, Jim and Jordan. Um, so, so Jim, I, I guess this question is for you. Apart from email, do you use any other channels to communicate with writers? Um, is social media effective? Um, that's a great question. Um, I, you know, after kind of uh, doing this for four years, but also um, we've hosted webinars in the past with, um, with writers from um, TechCrunch, VentureBeat, um, Wired, and some others. Um, it seems like email is definitely in, in the United States is definitely um, kind of the go-to um, because um, a, a journalist most generally wouldn't want to be bothered via phone. Um, it's been our experience in the United States that that's how it goes. Um, in Latin America, for example, it's different. Uh, we do public or we do do a lot of communication over the phone. 
um, for, for Latin American journalists as well. Um, so I, I would say that um, probably email I would recommend um, the best, or, or I'm sorry, I would recommend um, the most. Um, however, we've had success as well um, pitching over Twitter. Um, find if you can't find a journalist email, um, which I can also um, talk about. Uh, I see another question about finding kind of relevant details, so I can go into that a little bit more. Um, but definitely, um, uh, pitch, pitching somebody via um, um, Twitter um, or or LinkedIn or some of these other um, social media platforms has ha we have seen um, uh, kind of some success there um, as well, but I think generally email has been our um, our big go-to. Um, obviously, if you're at an event as well, um, another thing that might be, so if, if, if you attend startup events, um, it, it's a good thing to ask the organizer um, of the event if they can provide a media list for any journalist that might be attending, and then you can reach out to them as well um, via email and, and try to set up one-on-one -on -one interviews, um, or um, taking a look at Twitter and kind of also understanding if, um, if there's journalists kind of within your area um, to set up, you know, quick, buy them a coffee and, and, and talk about kind of what you're building to kind of establish that relationship as well. Um, I, you know, that's not for, that's not available for everybody. Um, it might work well in a city like New York or, or San Francisco. Um, it might be a little bit harder to do if you're Bratislava or, or some of these other cities as well. Um, so um, I would recommend that those um, for us that that's really what, what we've been using. Right. Can, Thank can you, I, Jordan. Jordan yeah. Yes, of course. How would you like to be contacted? Sure. I was going to say that um, I think the era of social of of Twitter has really kind of revolutionized um, like the like the metaphysical conversation and to see what people are talking about. I also think that um, as um, as entrepreneurs and startups, you're already attuned to the media. And so I think like showing that you've already built up, um, you know, non solicitations of media. So like retweets, sharing, um, that's like really impactful for me to already see. And that kind of gives you clout. I think uh, on top of, you know, some of the tips that Jim mentioned of like, um, sorry, my uh, microphone went out for a second. Um, I think like showing that you're part of the conversation first is really impactful. And then if I'm contacted on Twitter and say you retweet an article that I wrote about um, like blockchain in Latin America, then I'm very, I'm much more uh, amenable to having that conversation than getting uh, kind of um, blindsided from an inbox. It's like, hey, like this is what we do. Do you cover this? Um, it, it's a lot easier. Um, but via email and social media um, to see that you're already having that conversation. And so I think being attuned to, you know, your industry, your niche, uh, and where people are having that conversation, uh, there's surely going to be journalists in that area, uh, in that, in that um, sphere of influence as well. Right, let, me, let, me, let me then ask a, a really good follow-up question I just read. It's, so, so social media is important, and, 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 you know, you see the email and you're probably going to check out who these guys are. You'll check Twitter, you'll check social media. How, how important is the person's social media profile uh, to, to both of you, to, to Jordan and, and Jim? How important is it in deciding uh, how to engage with a pitch? Uh, for you, Jordan, you, do you check out like the number of followers, like where they come from? Like what, what do you check out there? And let's start with you and then Jim can give us his, his Sure. I think, I mean, social media is really a toss up, especially if you're, um, like a, a fledgling um, industry, like a fledgling player in the industry. So if you've just started, you know, I don't expect you to have thousands of followers. I think, again, I'd reiterate, like what are the kinds of things that you're tweeting about and what are the things that you, uh, who, are the, who are the people you're following? Um, to, to really watch in real time um, how serious you are about making um, uh, an inroad into the industry um, that you're that you're focused on. Um, I think that's just really important to show some sort of um, legitimacy to like the conversation that you want to have and the impact that you want to have. Um, I, I think that's uh, th that's really relevant, and uh, it's been my experience um, that in some cases, um, journalists are actually specifically for pitching guest articles. Um, editors have asked for social media profiles and i think part of that is because um uh, you know of course editors are interested in building traffic um to their to their site and they know that if 
potentially they have a um, a writer that has a large following on Twitter and they're going to be you know sharing that across their social media that that's going to drive traffic back to their site um, again that's not with everybody it has happened before in the past where they're interested in people um, um, for guest article contributors that have large social media followings um, so I would take that into consideration um, and then that's also something that um, a kind of a tangent here is um, when you are starting to publish um, guest articles um, and maybe you get them in kind of some of these bigger um, entrepreneurial sites or, or tech sites, um, you know, uh, that's something that I would leverage um, for you if you're going to look out to kind of set up meetings or to also um, maybe get a speaking role at a, at a conference. Um, I know it's a it's kind of attractive to conference organizers to see that you're also a contributor at a major publication because a that that lets them know that hey there's the possibility that um, he might write a or he or she might write a story um, about um, about attending the conference as well that would be published in there. So I would say that um, it's a good note as well, kind of an aside, just to keep keep note of where you're contributing, add that to your link, LinkedIn and mention that you're a contributor there. Um, and then also make sure if you're trying to set up speaking um, opportunities or just meetings in general, that you're also kind of um, leveraging that as well. Um, including also if you're trying to pitch again um, to uh, another publication to get a guest article published, it's good if you can say, hey, I've already contributed here and here um, and, and name some of kind of the bigger sites so they can see a little bit of your work as well. Jim, let's get a, a little bit more into detail about, uh, you know, what you were saying uh, in, in terms of pitching. Um, when, you know, you're trying then to find who you're going to send this information to, uh, mm -hmm. and this is a question from Doug, actually. He, he's, he's, he's asking, what's the best place to find, you know, relevant journalist uh, details? And, 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 and let me ask you your, some, some, something else that was asked in there from Elena. And Elena asked, you know, if you're, pitch, if you're pitching for the first time, what do you want to know about the author, uh, the article, and what it should be about? So when you're trying to get that information out uh, to them, how do you find who you're going to present it to? And also, how do you, what do you know about that person that you're going to present it to before you send the information? Awesome. Um, Doug and uh, I'm sorry, the Elena. Uh, Elena, um, those are actually both excellent questions. Let me go to Elena's first because I think it leads to, to the other. Um, uh, kind of in the in the process of um, deciphering, you know, who's going to be a good fit for the publication, um, um, we start out with um, Kind of, and, and especially if you don't have kind of a, a background knowledge of, um, of the specific um, media landscape in, in the industry that you're trying to pitch, um, a, a really good place to obviously start is, is a Google search or a Bing search. Um, and what we're gonna, um, what we're gonna try to do is um, uh, take a look at um, uh, people that cover the industry. You can, you can see within their bios, um, for example, um, if you're if you're going to search for news in a specific industry, just type in keywords, um, and then also um, you can um, you can type in competitors, um, which is a, a really good idea. Um, if you have any kind of larger competitors um, that have been covered in the media, you can bet that um, um, somebody who has already covered them might be interested in covering you as well. Um, and then also kind of key terms of of the you're trying to make, um, whether it's um, key terms of a, of a type of product, um, a type of industry, et cetera. Um, those are always um, good places to start. Um, also, you can check uh, masthead pages um, at uh, various websites um, and, um, and kind of see, uh, they, they, they note the beat list of everybody um, and, and, and you can find there. And then you can also um, use uh, similar, uh, similar web um, which is a good one um, uh, tool to find out um, if you're specific uh, if you're searching a very specific niche industry like let's say uh, logistics and you know of one really prominent um, publication if you use um, similar web you can take a look at other publications that um, publish 
you know, similar content, and then you can reach out there. Um, in terms of um, finding, and I'm going to try to keep these answers as short as possible because I know we, we have a lot of questions, um, but we can follow up as well. Um, in terms of finding relevant journalist details, um, that's a good question. Um, uh, you know, for, for, for those of us that work in the industry and have access, there's um, journalist tools, journalist um, contact tools like Muckrack, like Cision, for example, um, that have a database of, of journalists. Um, we also publicize, um, have a database of, of uh, that's free to access that we can share with anybody um, as well. Um, and then also um, for those of you that don't have access, um, you know, a quick Google search with the name, the publication and email can turn up some interesting on their Twitter feed, a lot of times people use um, uh, or have their emails. Um, also, uh, within their profiles on the specific publication, oftentimes journalists list their emails as well. Um, so I'd say that's a very good place to start. Right. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, as Jim was mentioning, in the chat se section, section of uh, this webinar, you can see uh, the link to our fine tech reporters. Uh, um, toolkit. So, so get go there, and, and you'll you'll find some ways to contact uh, reporters, some contacts in there for you. Um, I have a question for Jordan. Um, Jordan, this is from Mike. Uh, what's the best piece of advice when trying to approach journalists or publication? And the reason why I wanted to ask you is, from all the interactions that you could have, all, for all the types of first time interactions that you think. Uh, at a, at entrepreneur or startup can have with you how, how do you envision a good one from happening you already mentioned a little bit about Twitter and, and you know I didn't I didn't you in there uh, what, what else do you think could be a, a positive way to engage with a journalist such as you uh, I think um, the the slides actually laid it out very very succinctly that timing is really important and um, to be to be completely honest like a, a right pitch at the wrong time uh, is a wrong pitch um, and so being but there's things that you can do um, to kind of time it and, and calibrate. Um, and not, I'm not talking about like schedule and time of day, but more so um, is the thing that you're pitching what the journalist needs or is it what they're already talking about? That come, because that can instantly bring a, uh, a first time entrepreneur, a first time pitcher um, to the forefront of a conversation because they are watching the things that I'm covering uh, and see that uh, I'm going in a certain direction or asking a certain question. So I think that that uh, is more so um, attractive to me uh, as opposed to like, you know, is this, is this pitch um, more prominent or how many Twitter followers they have? But it's more like, you know, did they, did they seek out a need that I had um, and did they, um, and are they trying to fill it? Uh, one, one tip, uh, and I, I really caution um, overuse of this tip, but the breaking news thing, um, uh, putting timely in the headline can really boost your visibility uh, when you're pitching a, term, a journalist. So that's just just putting timely in colon and then whatever the subject line is. However, uh, abuse of that will make you uh, blacklisted to journalists. Um, and so I think like understanding um, the relevance of a certain product or a certain um, service and then saying like, hey, no, like I, we stand by this. Um, and also like understanding your role in the ecosystem of that. Um, like what can you offer a journalist is really the kind of questions that uh, I think that more people should be asking. Um, because again, like we, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, and we, as a journalist, like we benefit from experts in the field, um, but we don't necessarily benefit from uh, the promotion that, that you would get out of that. And so like being able to find that sweet spot uh, is really helpful. And I say uh, providing data and providing a, a sense of urgency uh, to that pitch is um, probably the most ideal um, situation for, for the media. Thank you so much, Jordan. Uh, Jim, uh, when, when and, and I guess for different types of pitches, there are different response rates. And, and, and Ben is asking a really good question. How, how long after we are pitching something uh, should we expect for a response? And it, it, how effective is just following up and just like just doing it very frequently? Uh, how, what have you seen? Um, that's a good question. I, I would say it, it depends on the story and the timeliness. Um, again, um, to go back to Jordan, you know, if he is covering um, a specific story that day, um, you know, I would I would try to follow up um, once maybe that day. Um, and because you know he's you know he's already covering it. 
Um, I would say that kind of generally, um, I would wait 24 hours um, on a on a on a regular pitch that might not be as um, as timely. I would wait about 24 hours and then send one follow up. Um, if you don't hear from them after about um, you know a few hours, I would maybe go on to the next reporter. Um, they get hundreds of emails a day, and so it could be that they just don't have time. Um, but they do look at emails, and so if they are interested, they would reach out. Uh, in the term, in terms of guest articles, which are often um, a little less timely, um, depending, of course, on the angle that you're taking, I would suggest waiting uh, at least two days um, to follow up to allow the guest article editor time to actually review the piece. Um, again, those aren't as time pressing, so that's kind of like a general rule that I use. All right, so let's check out now. If you, if, if when you are when you are uh, doing this, uh, Jim, just just a follow up for you. Is there um, a way to avoid backlash? For example, uh, you know, have, have you received uh, you know negative feedback from journalists saying that do not contact me anymore uh, or just don't don't reach out to me? Sure, um, I, I think. I think what's important to also um, remind yourself is that nobody is owed coverage by any journalist. Um, and, and you want to always be very polite um, um, in, in your pitching. Um, you know, a nice quick um, greeting and then also just be very polite in the, in the, in the way you frame it. It's like, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to consider my story. Um, you know, I understand as well if you're not interested. Um, just kind of like that can change the tone. Um, uh, obviously, you know, if if you reach out to somebody that um, doesn't cover that beat um, and you and you kind of messed up, um, and they and they come back at you with a, a harsh email, I think it's the best thing you can do is you know just to apologize um, and say you know I, I'm really sorry for taking up your time. Thank you so much, and I'll keep that in. Uh, in mind in the future, and then just kind of make sure that you you only are pitching stuff to that journalist, which which is relevant. Um, so uh, that's probably the best way I would I would handle that, um, and I wouldn't take it you know too personally. But I would also come with the mindset that hey, I, I'm not owed anything, and so if if somebody um, you know gets back to me and they say no, they're not interested, um, I'm always going to say thank you for even considering that sort of thing. Right. Thank you, Jim. Uh, hey, Eddie. Jordan. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just want to um, piggyback on that. I think also leaving the door open um, for future interaction is really important because um, a lot of like, like if you like, again, I keep using the word ecosystem um, and there's like different subject areas and verticals that journalists cover. And so I think that if you a, identify where you fit into an ecosystem on a certain conversation, then you can say like, hey, like, you know, it's okay that this didn't work out, but we'd love to talk. And if you have questions about X, Y, and Z, uh, we'd be happy to talk to you. Um, like, I think that would be an ideal interaction for me. Um, because then again, you're providing yourself as a resource um, to me as opposed to, you know, me like putting me in a, a position where I'm supposed to be doing you a favor or something like that. Great. Jordan, I have a, a, another question for you. And this is uh, related to the subject line. You, you mentioned that the, the timely and then, you know, when it's urgent, sort of like that, kind of like gets your attention. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, so just to consider John's question here, what, what else then would be attractive to you on that, on your inbox? You know, you're getting a lot of pictures. What, what stands out to you? I think um, data is, is really attractive to me. Um, statistics, because again, like showing that you've done the research um, and then uh, aligning with a, a reputable source um, that has that has numbers on a certain a certain topic, um, because that's like those are things that I'm already attuned to um, when I read, you know, other other websites, uh, other media outlets. And so that the fact that you're doing that and in a way providing me with information I otherwise wouldn't have gotten, um, that's really that's really impactful. I also think, again, like the verbiage, um, like being pleasant uh, goes a long way. Um, and there's a sense of, of, of personalizing emails. Um, and I know that um, that pitching, you know, hundreds or, or however many um, media outlets is, is really grueling work, but by just putting like, you know, insert name here, um, 
like we can pick up on we can pick up on the formula very very quickly um and so i think that you'll have to provide some some data or some urgency um as to why i, I should look at this particular pitch thank you jordan and, and, and jim I, I, I presume you you have something to say because it's, is it is it just a numbers game uh you know and laura was asking about this she was she was asking, what is the conversion ratio if you, you know, pitch 100, then you get five responses? Like, is, is it a formula, insert name, and, or, or, or is there a, a, an art to it as well? How, how do you do that? How do you pick the journalists that you are going to be contacting? Does it have to be 100, 300, or is it, you know, sometimes 13, sometimes 25, sometimes 70? Well, how does it work? Um, I mean, that's a, that's a really good question. My, my honest feedback is, it, again, it kind of depends on the story. Um, there's some of those pitches, um, those stories, like for example, again, I'll, I'll, I'll use the same example of the, um, of the cybersecurity um, um, uh, news, news arc. Um, and essentially, I, could, I can see that um, you know, people cover cybersecurity. I, can, I know that this is the biggest cyber attack that, that has happened uh, in recent years. I know that they're going to be covering it. Um, and so I can reach out with a very specific email. Um, if it's like a product launch announcement, um, that's a lot trickier. And uh, I think that the, the you know the the task is to kind of fit your product into uh, a problem that it's happening within the industry, and and position you guys as kind of a a, rev, a, a resolution for this for this problem. Um, and and that can be a little bit more along the lines of. I know it's not a good term to use, but kind of like the spray and pray where you reach out to um, a list of, of multiple journalists um, with a kind of a, a, a personalized but similar email um, and and hope that a certain number of them are going to um, respond. I, you know, I would say that I've seen success in both. Not all the time are we, unfortunately, you know, not all the time are we going to be um, blessed uh, with a news arc that really fits our um, our client, so we have to kind of get creative. Um, so I would say that uh, it's a little bit of both, and it really depends again on the story, on how you do it um, to be successful. Right. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, and and it, I guess it's a question for for either of you. Bianca is asking on that interaction, we're, and we're talking specifically about that interaction, about that first piece of like communication. How long should that email be, or is it? It just needs to be as long as it needs. What? What? It's, what? What? What have you said, I, Jordan? I'll pass that to you because yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can't remember who said it to me. I think it was an editor of mine uh, who talked about uh, receiving like, personal pitches from freelance journalists, and they said that uh, the longer the email, the less respect you have for the person, um, and that's always stuck with me because it's the less respect you have for their time um, and. And for whatever reason that, you know, they, they, they owe you um, the space uh, to kind of like get to the point. Um, you know, in journalism, we look at the lead, which is usually like the first two sentences in an article. Um, you know, same thing for an academic paper. It's like the last sentence in the first paragraph. So I think cutting to the chase uh, to the chase is really important um, and not and especially not, you know, copy and pasting the article that you're hoping to pitch. Because, um, again, like, you know, there's very seldom. Um, there's very seldom opportunities or seldom instances where I would consider just copy and pasting. Oh, actually, I would never consider copy and pasting um, an article from an email form into into whatever um, content management system we're using. Uh, so I'd say shorter the better. All right. Um, Thanks. But, yeah. And can I can I follow up on that? Because I, I have um, I agree with a lot of that, and uh, but I've also seen um, some um, some things that contradict that. So, um, for example, uh, when pitching guest articles, um, it's been my experience that with with a lot of editors, at the end of the day, the the content is what they're actually judging on whether or not they're going to post. Um, and so, um, at the end of the day, we do include a a guest article. It wouldn't be us just, you know, pasting in the guest article. Uh, what what I find works. When you know you need to include a lot of information, um, but obviously you know everybody hates that dreaded email where you just open up and there's just a brick of text and you're like I'm not going to read this. 
So imagine if a journalist gets one of those and they get hundreds of those a day. Um, what I like to do is kind of break up the content a little bit visually in that so I write a two or three sentence line about like, hey, this is my pitch. And then I sign off and say, you know, I've left a lot more information if you're still interested below. Um, so essentially they can just read the gist of it. They can decide, hey, this is something I am interested in and I want to read further or not. And I think that that kind of helps out because sometimes it's, um, it's hard to get everything you need in that one little sentence as well. I guess I do amend like the the severity of the way I said that. I think um, like the pitch, like the the two sentence pitch, is really important um, because if there is interest, well then like you, there's less work, there's and, and less back and forth if the article's there. Um, but I think being able to give the journalist autonomy um, with like how the content comes out and if it matches the publication, I think is really important. Um, as opposed to saying like you know, here's our article, take it or leave it. Right, that's 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 great. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. We will still have some questions. Uh, everyone, if you still have some questions, please put them in there. Elena asked another great question. I think this goes to you, Jordan, um, because you, you were talking about like being very good at just looking at the subject line, and it's like, okay, I know, I know what I need to know about like that story. Like, what's that structure to you? Like, what what do you need? To, what would you like to see in that subject or subject line? Um, that's a good question. Uh, well. Having it in all caps won't help, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> but I think, again, like, oh, that's a really good question. I, I mean, I think like words and key phrases um, that are in, that are in like, you know, in top Google searches, right? Like words and key phrases that are um, kind of buzzwords for other articles um, that are not necessarily like PR related are really helpful. Um, and so, Mentioning another media outlet, uh, say like you know so and so reported on this, um, but it's it's not like a it's not there's not like a golden answer there. Um, but I think like showing like timeliness or urgency, um, not necessarily in like um, like how recent it was, but um, in like the kind of the the urgency of the of the question itself. So and sometimes I think a question actually helps. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's it's kind of like a, a roundabout answer. But I think there's no real like formula for it um but i think like kind of showing need uh and like how you feel that need is actually really helpful uh, jim, jim i don't know if you can jump in there at all um well i guess my question would be about also like um you know elena mentioned for reaching out for the first time so you really don't know who this person is at all so how important is it for them to kind of uh, mention their social proof like, hey, I used to work at Google or, or, you know, whatever it is that makes them an expert on this topic and explain why actually, yes, they're a good person to contribute an article or be interviewed about this topic. Hmm. I think on first, on first glance, um, on first glance in the subject line, um, I'm not sure there's enough space to, to demonstrate social proof. Um, right. But I think like topical proof um, and like topical alignment is really important for me, right? Um, so to say like, you know, like we, like you cover this or like, are you're interested, are you interested in, you know, covering blockchain or are you interested in covering, um, startups in Latin America? Like that's something that I would initially, um, like I, I would, I would think twice about or, or even three times because like, oh yeah, that's like somewhat more of a niche conversation that I'm interested in having, especially for Latin American reports, um, in the actual text. Yeah, that is really important. Uh, it is important to kind of lay out, uh, again, like as, Pick the one or two touch points on social proof, um, and then and then go from there. You know, so you know I don't want it, to. It is no use in in um, laying where you went to high school. You know, or like uh, your GPA in college, right? It's like if you wrote for this publication last week, then that's important. Um, and most recent, uh, and I, I think most recent touch points are also most helpful. Um, I, I think that did I get your question? Yeah, yeah, it did. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I have a question from Julian, um, and, and he's talking about about a difficult issue. Let's talk about like human rights violations, bad professional practices, uh, that sort of, of, of information, and, and how that sort of information is communicated. Uh, from I guess from Jim's perspective, uh, how how do you communicate uh, negative things, or not necessarily negative things, but that sort of information that provides um, you know a counterpoint to what's been discussed. Uh, uh, as an example, uh, today we're talking about uh, you know break up big tech. 
uh, in the United States. And, and you know, you might have uh, a client of some sort of wants to contrast that or, or, or say that, yes, we need to break big tech and your client is not big tech. How do you, um, you know, approach a sort of like uh, a difficult scenarios when you are, um, when you are pitching, when you are uh, uh, sending that information to journalists. And, and I guess from, from Jordan's perspective is, is how, how, do, how would you like to receive that information? What's relevant about, because sometimes it can just get very, you know, everyone pitching to you like, hey, here's this big tech thing uh, and, and I hate them. What, how, do you con how do you consider and actually decide what's valuable out of like all the noise there? I don't know who, who wants to answer first. I mean, maybe I would just say probably, Jordan, you're going to be able to pick this up a lot better. I would say, though, probably, again, like data and evidence is is huge. Um, you know, just because um, just because a big tech company um, has has pissed you off um, and you want to rant about it uh, isn't necessarily newsworthy. Um, however, and I, I see um, Siegland, I think is how you pronounce um, this person's name, had mentioned about uh, in the comment section, kind of about um, trying to pitch a, a, a corruption scandal. Um, I, I think, you know, it's going to be evidence that you can provide. Um, it's going to be reaching out to the right journalist who's an investigator um, and, um, and, and really communicating that evidence and showing them that. Um, otherwise, uh, I think it's going to be hard. Um, so if, for example, your company is suffering from a, a particular move that um, was made by the government or um, by you know a big a big player in the industry, um, and and you can say that hey this is a part of a bigger trend as well. This is affecting um, a lot of small businesses now, um, and here's here's the data that backs that up. Then I think you have um, a leg to stand on. Um, otherwise, it's kind of hard to um, to go after that. And I'm not sure. Maybe Jordan, you want to weigh in on that? Sure. No, I think you really hit it, Jim. I think. Um like contextualizing, um, contextualization and framing is everything. Um, and particularly for the, the publications that I manage um, uh, in the newsroom here, uh, each of them have a mission that is to contextualize whatever industry or whatever focus um, that they've va found valuable. Um, and so like a one-off story, unless it is, um, unless it's indicative of a larger issue, um, will sometimes go um, un, unreported and uncovered because there's no direct um, line to a, to a larger story there. So I think one way to think about it, and I'm not sure like the formatting of it, but you know, like statistic colon, here's an example of that, right? Is, is, a, is a better way to think of it as opposed to like, you know, here's, here's one particular, here's a one-off story that um, is why, you know, I'm, I'm angry at, at XYZ company or um, this is a problem, you know? So, you know, X, X company contributed, you know, had this many layoffs. Um, that's part of a larger, you know, conspiracy or like narrative of, um, you know, certain X demographic of workers being being disenfranchised. I think that is much more salient uh, to a journalist than to say like, oh, hey, look at me. This is the most important story, um, because I think that one value that journalists do have is they have um, they're oriented towards what these bigger stories are, um, and so in, unless it's you know it has like geopolitical ramifications, um, or unless you can show that, um, these one-off stories won't always uh, be attractive. And so kind of showing a correlation is really helpful. Thank you, guys, because I think that also answers some of the questions that, that other listeners were, were having. Um, I, I think we're, we're coming to, to the end of, of, of the webinar. Once again, if you're still listening uh, to this, we're going to be sending this over email with the toolkit, with press releases, with examples. Uh, um, let, let's get uh, to, to one of the last questions in here, uh, which is related uh, to, to pitching influencers. And a lot of people talk about influencers. And I just want to put in a, a bit uh, of, of, you know, my thinking about influencers. And we consider influencers, and in the last webinar, uh, you can also download it. Uh, we were talking about an influencer being someone that has an audience and a platform. Uh, so an influencer, and in the question, Fabio asked an influencer with more than a thousand people, I would challenge the idea by saying that anyone that has an audience of around a thousand people, uh, it's anybody who can get an article that's read by a thousand people or a video that's viewed by a thousand people or a podcast that's listened by a thousand people or any sort of content that's, you know, uh, that has that audience and that platform that they can access to. So how do you, how do you foresee this, this, this sort of, uh, um, 
uh, influencers in gym and, and do you uh, approach them differently uh, if they are not responding to email? Um, that's a good question. I, I mean, I think uh, the influencer, uh, outside of like journalists, who I would also consider influencers, of course. Um, but um, I, I would say that um, kind of the if we're talking about social media influencers, um, which would be YouTubers, people on Instagram, um, I, I think the the landscape is uh, you know it's re it's really interesting. It's and it's changing a lot. Obviously, these these folks have found a way to monetize. Um, they've linked up and they've also, um, you know, um, they're represented now by agencies. Um, there's, there's ways in, in order to contact them um, uh, to, to get in touch. Um, personally, um, I haven't done a lot of work um, with influencer outreach. Um, we've, we have, um, for example, uh, pitched uh, like video, like viral video um, that we've created. Um, or our clients have created um, to two different, um, you know, uh, publications that kind of um, publish those um, those types of stories. Um, but in terms of contacting the influencer, I would say, um, you know, uh, generally what I've seen is the um, the influencers with a lot a a lot of um, uh, following um, tend to already be represented by an agency, and so reaching out to them, they might re redirect you back to an agency uh, in order to work out. Um, uh, a deal so that they can do a campaign for you. Um, other smaller influencers, obviously, um, you can interact with them on their platforms. Um, there's ways to find emails as well for these people. Um, um, and you can contact them maybe directly through their YouTube page as well. Um, like I said, that, I think that's a very, it's an evolving industry. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways to go around it. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I guess that's kind of what I have to say on that. I'm not sure, Jordan, if you have any feedback sure. I mean I think about what you again like I don't think followers are the only um, metric for aim for influence I think um, like especially some of these more niche uh, niche industries um, whether that be academics whether that be experts in the field whether that's just someone that um, you know has an interest and has a following um, or rather has generated like engagement um, with how they talk about something I think those are Kind of more uh, kind of creative ways to think about um, you know who to start having a conversation with because it's not always you know the person with the largest following um, like largest mass following sometimes it's the um, the more tailored specialized group that uh, a is more engaged um, and is more likely to share something uh, and more likely to actually um, to kind of be part of that, be part of that conversation, as opposed to someone that just like retweets it and, and leaves it and leaves it alone. Right. Thank, thank you both. I, I, we are getting really close to the end, but we have a, a few more questions, and, and we're just going to send a message there. Elena, really, really last question for you guys. Um, when and, and you have talked about how you pitch the story, you've talked about you know the information that you put, social proof, put it, make it genuine, all these things. You respond. Jim and Jordan are now amigos. Uh, how do you maintain that relationship? Uh, what, what, what do you do, Jim, to maintain that relationship with Jordan? And Jordan, uh, what do you feel is just not intrusive? What do you feel as, thank you so much for sending that information. I recognize that we have a, a relationship. I want to start with Jim, and then we'll go with Jordan. Um, I, you know, I think obviously it's um, um, context in the email. Um, if we've worked together on multiple stories then our, our emails become a lot less formal um hey jordan like this story really i think fits with you um here it is uh, and just get straight just get straight to it if i'm pitching him um it, it might also mean um you know telling a client that hey like I, I really know jordan and i and this this one isn't for him um so you know if, if you'd like to pitch him on your own um you can do that but i, I really don't think that we're going to get anywhere with him um so i think it's kind of at that point we kind of reverse roles and I could become a gatekeeper to the, to the stories. And I could say, you know, Hey, um, Jordan, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to be giving you good, um, good stuff that I really do think that you'd be interested in based on, um, the stuff that we've worked on before and all the conversations that we've had before. Um, I also like to reach out, um, from time to time with, with email, 
just uh, e either, you know, if we, if we can um, to, to speak and um, um, sit down and talk, but if not, just to say, hey, Jordan, like, is there anything that, you know, you're working on? I see you've been covering this or um, uh, let me know if, if I can help with tracking down any sources or any information for you. Like, really, it's about me providing value uh, to Jordan. Um, because that's where um, uh, his job is to provide value to his readers. Um, and then I can align myself um, to that um, in, in some ways. So I think that that's probably what I would do. Yeah, no, I think Jim, Jim hit it um, uh, hit out of the park there. I think uh, after the, that initial contact has been established uh, for one or two times, um, just saying like, hey, you know, I thought of you because of this story. And so, you know, here's, um, here's the pitch. And that can... You know, a two-line email, uh, if that. I think something that would be really impactful for me is if someone, again, would just ask a question like, hey, do you need anybody on this topic? Uh, with no linking in the article, um, I think that would show um, just a kind of like sincerity uh, for the relationship and also just like, again, wanting to provide value. Um, but I, I think Jim hit, hit all the points. Uh, and also remembering birthdays and, and weddings and things like that. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, guys, yeah. thank you very much. We're going to be sending uh, this information, but I want to I, I want to I want to say thank you to Jim and Jordan very quickly. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, please don't uh, go. We have um, slide deck uh, that we're going to be sending you all. We have the recording of the webinar that we're also going to be sending you, uh, and we are also going to be sending you the pitching to journalist toolkits, which includes example pitches, metric trackers, and a template to write your own pitch. And for about a week. Uh, everyone, I'll be offering a free consultation. Um, the email uh, that we were going to send you, uh, we'll have a link, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for participating. But uh, please, if you want to know more about this, learn more about what we've been talking about, sign up to that free consultation, and we will have a conversation similar to what, we, what you have seen uh, related to your company. And once again, we will... Um, send you the slide deck, the recording of the webinar, and the pitching to journalist tools kits, uh, uh, which once again includes metrics trackers and, and all of that. Uh, this is what you will see. Uh, so request that free assessment, send an email to info at publicize.co. Uh, this will be available only for limited time. Uh, so I would love to hear your thoughts about this webinar. If you liked it, uh, send us you know that uh, thumbs up or that five, and uh, we hope to hear from you very soon. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Bye.